thank you. Um, okay, so yeah, my name is Carly Rodriguez, and today I will be presenting the research that I did with my mentor, Yastino Oshlevska, in coding and test interaction in the DRM paradigm. Uh, so just a quick little introduction to the DRM paradigm. Um, the DRM paradigm is a method that's used to test false memories using lists of closely related words. So each list is built around a word called a non-presented critical lure. So for example, you can see the words bed, rest, awake, pillow, and blanket, and these could be presented and studied. And then the critical lure for this list would be sleep. Um, and it was discovered in the original study that these critical lures intruded into the participants' memories, and then they would falsely recall them um, as being studied when their memory was tested. Along with the critical lure, um, unrelated words and studied words are used when testing the uh, participants' memories. Um, when it comes to recognition tests, there's two um, common tests. The first is called a yes-no test, and you can see a little example um, in the right. Um, where horse would be the unrelated word, bed is the studied, and then sleep is the critical word. And then the other commonly used recognition test is called a two-force choice test. Um, and in this test, instead of having the word single, um, singly listed, the words are put into pairs. So you can see another little example using the same words, um, where horse and bed are a pair, and horse is the unrelated word, and bed is the studied, and then sleep would be the critical word, and pillow is the studied word. Um, and then uh, these words, you can see all words from all the lists that the participants study are used, not just from one list. And then for encoding, it's been suggested that memory accuracy um, actually depends on the depth that experiences, um, or in this case, words are processed. And this is where deep and shallow encoding come into play. Um, so deep encoding occurs when items are deeply processed, so more associations can be made. And shallow encoding occurs when items are superficially processed and fewer associations are usually made. In the present study, we wanted to explore how deep and shallow encoding interact with different tests in the DRM paradigm, um, specifically if a two-force choice test promotes more thorough monitoring strategies. Um, if it does, then better performance should be shown uh, when testing shallow encoding on a two-force choice test than a yes-no test. Um, and these findings will hopefully further help us test shallow encoding or um, discover the mechanisms um, responsible for memory errors and how memories work. This could even call into question how much we should actually trust our uh, memory and put trust into things like witnesses who um, believe to remember something, but in reality, their memory has been tainted. And of course, further research, specific research would have to be done for this, but this is a good first step. So for the research design, we used a between subject design. Um, and you can see on the little web diagram, the four different conditions and then kind of the procedure that the participants went through. So when the participants came in, they were randomly assigned to a condition and this determined the depth of encoding and then the test that they would take. Um, and after the test, they were debriefed. Um, so before diving into the outcomes, I wanted to define recollection and familiarity. And then there's also a little web diagram. Um, so recollection, uh, these familiarity and recollection um, are two processes that are engaged in recognition memory. And recollection refers to the retrieval of specific information. And this process is considered to be behind the remember judgments um, because they can vividly recall the experience. And yes, no tests are said to rely on this recollection process more. Whereas familiarity um, is like a general recognition of something without having the specific details. And this process is considered to be behind the no judgments or when a person just knows something without being able to recall specific details. And then this uh, forced choice tests are said to rely on this process more. Um, so the findings. Uh, our findings were in line with previous research um, because it was shown that yes, no tests rely more on recollection and two forced choice tests rely on familiarity. Um, so we believe that this is why more errors were made on the critical lures than the unrelated items when participants were taking the two forced choice test um, because more associations were made. So these lures were recognized as belonging to one of the lists. Um, 
Another main takeaway is with the encoding. Um, so deep encoding reflects a process that makes it easier to recall specific words. Um, and this is shown because of the increase in number of correctly recognized studied words um, and a decrease in the errors to the unrelated words. Along with this, uh, a possible shift towards recollection and better distinguishment of words might have occurred while the participants completed a two-force choice test. Uh, and this is thought to have happened because less critical words were marked as studied when using the two-force choice test than the yes-no test. So this means that the participants did not rely on associations, but they were able to specifically distinguish between a studied and a critical word, um, even though they're super similar. Um, and then for shallow encoding, um, it makes it difficult to access memories of a specific word. So a distinguishment between words, um, regardless of if they were studied or not, may be impossible, causing fewer errors to lures than the unrelated words, um, meaning that totally unrelated words, so like horse, were marked as studied. And then uh, before finishing, I just wanted to thank my mentor, Yastina Oshlevska, um, who has allowed me to work with her, and then the McNair program for the support and funding that they have given me. Thank you.